Russia's invasion of Ukraine may end in a way that Russian President Vladimir Putin does not want. Months ago, Russian President Vladimir Putin, dreaming of a Soviet Union, mobilized the Russian army to invade Ukraine. He wanted to take Kiev in a very short time and end the war by stopping the heart of Ukraine. But so far this has not happened. After years of fighting separatist groups in Russia's Donbass region, the Ukrainian army had gained a great deal of combat experience, despite its fear and tear. The unjust invasion of annexation of Crimea by Russia was another lesson learned by the Ukrainian army. Knowing that Russia would not keep its promises made at the table on the battlefront, the Ukrainian government confronted Russia with a very strong resistance, both to strengthen its army and to maintain its independence. As a result of the fierce clashes that went down in the history of the world warfare as the defense of Kyiv, the Russians suffered a first major blow in this invasion attempt. The Ukrainian army impressed Western countries with its superior resistance and fighting capability in Kyiv, which led to a lot of military aid. Knowing the importance of Ukraine's preservation of its independence and acting accordingly, Western states first subjected Russia to many international sanctions and then provided Ukraine with significant arms aid. The United States in particular has so far provided Ukraine with billions of dollars worth of state-of-the-art weapons. In a sense, the Ukrainian arena has turned into an arena where the weapons technologies of the world's two great powers are at war. So far, the weapons provided by the United States have an overwhelming superiority over Russia's war technology. Ukrainian soldiers trained in Western countries have played an important role in turning the war in Ukraine's favor. Against this backdrop, Russian President Vladimir Putin has become isolated from the rest of the world, and Russia's military operations abroad have been jeopardized. Putin, who had hoped to become a major power in Syria and Africa, for example, has said goodbye to these dreams for now. Putin, who expected to show the world his power by winning the war in Ukraine in a few weeks, has lost a significant number of soldiers and military equipment worth more than $100 billion. The most painful thing for Putin was that the Ukrainian army, especially in Kharkiv, restored most of the captured weapons and used them against the Russian army. In a sense, the Russian armed forces have lost the weapons that could have hit them to the Ukrainian army because of their inability to fight. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, one of the most important characters of the war, is known as the leader who shook Putin's image, despite not having much experience in the political arena. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said that the conflict with Russia continues on a front line of 1,000 square kilometers. Zelensky stated that in the war against Russia, the clashes continue on a front line of at least 1,000 square kilometers, with the most intense and fiercest fighting taking place in the Donetsk region. In a video posted on his Telegram account, Zelensky said that they are trying to take the necessary measures to respond to the intensive air strikes organized by the occupying Russian forces against Ukraine. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said that, in meetings with the Ukrainian military command and the security commissions of the Ukrainian government, they reviewed the situation in the ongoing war against Russia, adding that, they know what the enemy is preparing, but they will continue to respond to them and fight for the independence of their country. Stating that they need support to protect Ukraine's airspace, Zelensky emphasized that they are struggling to protect their airspace with the means at their disposal. The mobilization operation launched by Russian President Vladimir Putin with high hopes is heading towards a complete disappointment. Western intelligence organizations have prepared reports on the mobilized soldiers. According to the reports, the mobilized Russian troops have nothing to do with military training. 
Most of these troops sent into the middle of the war are either neutralized by the Ukrainian army in the first place, or become targets of Ukraine's long-range missiles before they can fight. Russia, which does not have time to train the mobilized troops, is looking for a solution to the significant troop losses, but so far no solution has been found. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian army continues to strike and destroy Russian military positions in the occupied territories. In the last 24 hours, the Ukrainian forces have repulsed 14 Russian attacks in Kharkiv, Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia regions. According to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Russia launched four missile and 19 air strikes across Ukraine and carried out more than 75 attacks with MLRS. The occupying Russian forces tried to break through the Ukrainian army's defenses in four different areas, but the Russians lost more than 120 soldiers in these clashes. The Ukrainian army also destroyed Russian military facilities and two command posts. Heroic Ukrainian soldiers also destroyed six Russian refueling stations near Novosilskaya in Mykolaiv region. Ukrainian forces attacked mobilization troops, a known weakness of the Russian army. Near the village of Makivka in the Luhansk region, the Ukrainian army neutralized hundreds of Russian soldiers and destroyed several Russian military battalions. Artillery units of the Russian army continue to attack other settlements in Ukraine. Russia attacked Zaporizhia. Anatoly Kurtiev, deputy mayor of Zaporizhia, reported that Russian forces shelled a residential area in Zaporizhia, causing a fire. The occupying Russian forces have shelled the Sumy region more than 50 times. According to the governor of the region, Dmitry Zawitsky, Russian forces launched attacks on five settlements neighboring the northern Sumy region. Many people were injured as a result of the Russian shelling, which also attacked the Dnipropetrovsk region. The wounded people in the region were taken to hospitals. In the Donetsk region, three people were killed and eight people were wounded in the attacks of Russian forces. It is known that 350,000 people live in the Donetsk region where the evacuation operation continues. According to the United States media, the Ukrainian capital Kiev is ready for an evacuation operation at any moment. Ukrainian authorities have already started planning the evacuation of 3 million people in case important infrastructure facilities are out of use. Ukrainian authorities, who also attach importance to the defense of Kiev, are taking extra measures to increase security. On the other hand, Ukrainian energy company Ukrainargo announced planned hourly power cuts in eight regions, including Kyiv. Kyiv, Kharkiv, Chernihiv, Cherkasy, Zitomir, Sumy and Poltova regions will experience power cuts.